And joining me now is Oral Braun, international relations and political science professor at the University of Toronto. Uh, professor, thanks for being here. Reports are out saying Putin's opposition leader is dead. Prison staff are saying he lost consciousness. Your reaction to this? It is a terrible day, obviously, for the family. It is a tragedy for Russia itself, for the Russian people, because this was a leader who fought against corruption, who wanted to see a democratic Russia where people's rights were respected, their dignity would be protected. And he also wanted peace. He, call, he called the war of aggression against Ukraine. He called it the stupid war. So at every single level, he represented what was best in Russia and so this death, which isn't just a matter of something happening within or having happened within the past 24 hours, that the reports from the prison service are accurate that, it, uh, that Mr. Navalny is indeed dead. Uh, this has been going on, this attempt to kill this man for a long time. There were various attempts at uh, uh, assassination, including one that had to be ordered at the highest level by Mr. Putin himself. And this is more than three years ago when he suffered an attack using a nerve agent, the Novichok nerve agent. He almost died. He uh, was rushed to hospital and then taken to Germany, uh, at the top medical facility, and he recovered. He insisted on coming back to fight for the rights of the people of Russia. He was thrown in jail. Uh, in uh, jail, he did not get the proper medical care or nutrition and he was successfully punished by being put into solitary confinement and more recently sent to one of the worst uh, penal colonies north of the Arctic Circle. So in a sense, this was murder by installment. Now there is a presidential election next month in Russia. Uh, do you find the timing of this convenient? Mr. Putin obviously brooks no opposition. And what we see that those who have opposed him, those who have criticized him, very often uh, were found dead. And obviously, uh, Mr. Navalny was an extremely effective critic who got under Mr. Putin's skin. Now, whether this was done deliberately at this point, or which is a cumulative effect of all the horrific things that were done to Mr. Navalny doesn't matter that much. It is the process, the way people are treated in Russia and the need for everyone to understand that the domestic repression in Russia also coincides with external aggression. So those who are isolationists, those who think that you can separate international behavior from domestic policy are sadly mistaken. Now, Navalny's chief of staff isn't ready to believe that he has died. He blames Russian propaganda for all of this. What do you make of that? It also tells us how opaque the regime is in Russia, that we cannot even have clarity as to exactly what has happened. The odds are that Mr. Navalny is not, not alive. But because this regime has been so untrustworthy because the lies have been so systematic. Uh, we cannot be absolutely sure for a little while, but I'm afraid that more than likely it is the case that Mr. Navalny is no longer alive, but we have a kind of stark illustration of how the system works under Mr. Putin. And it's not one that's nationalistic. Uh, that is just a, an instrumental way of justifying uh, Mr. Putin holding on to power. This is basically a mafia-like regime where those who don't toe the line are eliminated and uh, no dissent, no opposition is, is allowed. And this cannot last forever because all dictatorships at some point fail. And maybe, just maybe, this will be the beginning uh, of the disintegration of the Putin regime because dictatorships often look very strong and stable until all of a sudden they're no longer strong and uh, and stable. And Mr. Navalny said that if he should be killed, the fight for freedom in Russia must continue. And I think that is crucial. 
Oral Braun, international relations and political science professor at the University of Toronto. We thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.